When I look back, I am so impressed again with the life-giving power of literature. If I were a young person today trying to gain a sense of myself in the world, I would do that again by reading, just as I did when I was young. Those powerful words came from the great late Maya Angelou. On behalf of Carroll County's Superintendent of Schools, Stephen Guthrie, who was unable to attend tonight due to the regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting, I am thrilled and honored to welcome you to our culmination of Black History Month, our African American Read-In. Carroll County Public Schools, Carroll County Chapter of the NAACP, and the Carroll County Public Library have partnered to sponsor this event. It took a few snowstorms and ice storms uh, before we were finally able to come together tonight, but here we are. The African American Read-In is a unique opportunity for our community to celebrate the achievements of African American authors and to find inspiration from the readings shared by our talented students or to experience, as Maya Angelou described, the life-giving power of literature. I want to thank the Carroll Arts Center for the use of this beautiful venue tonight, the Carroll County Chapter of the NAACP, the Carroll County Public Library, the Planning Committee, our high school English teachers of Carroll County Public Schools, and of course our students for all of their work and planning and to stage the first Carroll County African American read-in. We also want to thank our sponsors and donors who are responsible for the wonder wonderful refreshments that were in the lobby, the flowers, and uh, the books that are, are available as well. The uh, evening is also being taped and aired on Channel 19 um, and will be shown at a later date. It's also being shown live. It's streamed as we are uh, here this evening, but it will also be aired at a later date. In closing, what a wonderful way to celebrate the works and words of great American authors. I think you're in for a very, very special evening. And so with that, I will turn things back to our host and hostess. Due to schedule changes, the Liberty High School performers were not able to be here in person. However, they wanted to be a part of the show. I present Tom Klaus, who is the principal of Liberty High School, and his student performers, Jeff Ball, Will Clancy, Nick Zakowski, Jacob Fisher, Mariama Jawara, Claire Cruz, Tyler Nusbaum, Michaela Perry, Drew Pernunzi, and Keaton Warner. Hello, and welcome to the Liberty High School Drama 3 class's dramatic reading of the poem, Million Man March by Maya Angelou. We hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. The night has been long. The wound has been deep. The pit has been dug. And the walls have been steep. Under a dead blue sky, on a distant beach. I was dragged by my braids, just beyond your reach. Your hands were tied, and your mouth was bound. You couldn't even call out my name. You were helpless, and so was I. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately, throughout history, history you've worn a badge of shame. I say, the night has been long, the wound has been deep, the pit has been dark, and the walls have been steep. But today, voices of old spirit sound speak to us in words profound. Across the years, across the centuries, across the oceans, and across the seas, they say, draw near to one another, save your race. You have been paid for in a distant place. The ancestors remind us that slavery's chains have paid for our freedom again and again. And again. The night has been long. The, the pit, pit has been deep. The night has been dark. And, and the walls have been steep. The hells we have lived through and lived through still have sharpened our senses and toughened our will. The, the night has been long. This morning, I looked through your anguish right down, down to your soul. soul. I know with each other we can make ourselves whole. I looked through your posture and past your disguise and see your love for family in your big brown eyes. I say, clap hands, and let us come together in this meeting ground. I say, clap, clap hands, and let's deal with each other with love. I say, clap, clap hands, and let us get from the low road of indifference. Clap, clap hands. hands, let us come together and reveal our hearts. Let us come together and revise our spirits. Let us come together and cleanse our souls. Clap, clap hands. Let's leave the preening and stop impostering our own history. Clap hands. Call the spirits back from the ledge. 
Back hands! Let us invite joy into our conversation. Courtesy into our bedrooms. Gentleness into our kitchen. Care into our nursery. The, the ancestors, ancestors remind us. Despite the history of pain, we are a going on people who will rise again. And, and still we rise! Lawrence Dunbar. Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I know what the cage bird feels, alas, when the sun is bright on the upland slopes, when the wind st st stirs soft through the springing grass, and the river flows like a stream of glass, when the first bird sings and the first bud opes, and the faint perfume from its chalice steals, I know what the cage bird feels. I know why the cage bird beats his wing till its blood is red on the cruel bars, for he must fly back to his perch and cling. When he fain would be on the bow a swing, and a pain still throbs in the old, old scar, and they Pulse again with a keener sting. I know why he beats his wing. I know why the cage bird sings, ah, me. When his wing is bruised and his bosom sore, when he beats his bars and he would be free, is not a carol of joy or glee, but a prayer that he sends from his heart's deep core, but a plea that upward to heaven he flings. I know why the cage bird sings. From Manchester Valley High School, we have Lexi Heyerbron, Rhea Parikh, Liliana Ryder, and Maya Zarvan. On the Pulse of Morning by Maya Angelou. A rock, a river, a tree, host to species long since departed, marked the mastodon, the dinosaur, who left dried tokens of their sojourn here on our planet floor. Any broad alarm of their hastening doom is lost in the gloom of dust and ages. But today, the rock cries out to us, clearly, forcefully, come, you may stand upon my back and face your distant destiny. But seek no haven in my shadow. I will give you no hiding place down here. You, created only a little lower than the angels, have crouched too long in bruising darkness darkness, have lain too long face down in ignorance, your mouth spilling words. Armed for slaughter, the rock cries out to us today, you may stand upon me, but do not hide your face. Across the wall of the world, a river sings a beautiful song. It says, come, rest here by my side. Each of you, a bored country, delicate and strangely <clears throat> made proud, yet thrusting perpetually under siege. Your armed struggles for profit have left collars of waste upon my shore, currents of debris upon my breast. Yet today, I call you to my riverside. If you will study war no more, come, clad in peace, and I will sing the songs the Creator gave to me when I and the tree and the rock were one. Before cynicism was a bloody seer across your brow, and when you yet knew you still knew nothing, the river sang and sings on. There is a true yearning to respond to the singing river and the wise rock. So say the Asian, the Hispanic, the Jew, the African, the Native American, the Sioux, the Catholic, the Muslim, the French, the Greek, the Irish, the Rabbi, the priest, the Sheik, the gay, the straight, the preacher, the privileged, the homeless, the teacher. <clears throat> they hear. They all hear the speaking of the tree. They hear the first and last of every tree speak to humankind today. Come to me. Here, beside the river, plant yourself beside the river. Each of you, descendant of some passed on traveler, has been paid for. You, who gave me my first name. You, Pawnee, Apache, Seneca. You, Cherokee Nation, who rested with me, then forced on bloody feet, left me to the employment of other seekers, desperate for gain, starving for gold. You, the Turk, the Arab, the Swede, the German, the Eskimo, the Scot, you, the Ashanti, the Yoruba, the crew, bought, 
sold, stolen. Arriving on the nightmare, praying for a dream. Here, root yourselves beside me. I am that tree, planted by the river, which will not be moved. I the rock, I the river, I the tree. I am yours. Your passages have been paid. Lift up your faces. You have a piercing need for this bright morning dawning for you. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Lift up your eyes upon this day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. Women, children, men, take it into the palms of your hands. Mold it into the shape of your most private need. Sculpt it into the image of your most public self. Lift up your hearts. Each new hour holds new chances for a new beginning. Do not be wedded forever. To fear yoked eternally to brutishness. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change. Here, on the pulse of this fine day, you may have the courage to look up and out and upon me, the rock, the, rock, the, rock, the, the river, river, the tree, tree your, your country. country. No less to Midas than the mendicant, no less to you now than the mastodon there. Here, on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out, and into your sister's eyes, and into your brother's face, your country, and say simply, very simply, with hope, good, good morning. morning. From Francis Scott Key High School, we have Travis Coppenhaver, who will be performing The Revolution Will Not Be Televised by Gil Scott Heron. The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. You'll not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You'll not be able to lose yourself on skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercials interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Mendel Rivers to eat hog maws confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the Schaefer Award Theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nubs. The revolution will not make you look, for, look five pounds thinner. The revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mays pushing in the shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color television into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on reports from nine, 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers in the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on a rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still life of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he had been saving for, the, for just the right occasion. Green Acres... Green Acres, the Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so goddamn relevant, and women will not care if Dick finally screwed Jane on Search for Tomorrow because black people will be in the street looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of hairy arm women liberationists and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Key, nor sung by Glenn Campbell, Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, or Engelbert Humperdinck. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will have to worry about a dove in your. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, a tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coke. The revolution will not fight the germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised. Will not be televised. Will not be televised. Will not be televised. The revolution will be on no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live.
Next from Francis Scott Key High School, we have Skylar Wheeler, who will be performing The Negro Speaks of Rivers by Langston Hughes. The Negro Speaks of Rivers. I've known rivers. I've no known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans. And I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. From South Carroll High School, we have Jeliza Mahano and Gianna Malangari performing I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. his wings in the orange sun rays and dares, dares to, to claim, claim the sky. sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so, so he opens his throat, throat to sing. sing. The cage bird, sorry. The cage bird sings with fearful trill of the things unknown but long for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze, and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees, and the fat worms, worms waiting on a dawn ride long, and he names the sky his own. But a cage bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but long for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the, the cage bird sings of freedom. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when, when I start to tell them, they, they think, think I'm, I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arm, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, and the curl of my lips. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's, that's me. me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth the swing in my waist, and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's, that's me. me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's, that's me. From North Carroll High School, we have Richard Dixon and Sania Fontaine performing an excerpt from A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry.
came over. I had some free time. I thought I might help with the packing. Ah, I love the look of tacky clothes. A household in preparation for a journey. It depresses some people, but for me, it's another feeling. Something full of flow, of life. Do you understand? Movement, progress. It reminds me of Africa. Africa. What kind of mood is this? Have I told you how deeply you moved me? He gave away the money, Asagad. Who gave away what money? The insurance money. My brother gave it away. He gave it away? He made an investment with a man even Travis wouldn't have trusted with his most worn out marbles. And it's gone? Gone. I'm very sorry. And you, now? Me? Me. Me, I am nothing. When I was very small, we used to take our sleds out in the winter time. And the only hills we had were some ice covered stone steps from some houses down the street. We used to fill them in with snow and make them real smooth, slide down them all day. It was very dangerous, you know, far too steep. And sure enough, one day, a kid named Rufus came down too fast and hit the sidewalk and we watched his face split open. I stood there looking at his bloody open face and I thought, that's the end of Rufus. But the ambulance came, they took him to the hospital. They sewed him all up, fixed his broken bones. And the next time I saw Rufus, <coughs> he had one little line going down the middle of his face. I never got over that. What? That that was what one person could do for another. Fix the problems, make it all right again. It's the most marvelous thing in the world. I wanted to do that. I always thought that it was the one concrete thing a human being could do. Heal the sick, make them whole again. It was truly being God. You wanted to be God? No. I wanted to cure. It used to be so important to me. I wanted to cure. It used to matter. I used to care. I mean, about people and how their bodies hurt. And you stopped caring? Yes, I think so. Why? Because it doesn't seem deep enough, close enough to what ails mankind. It's a child's way of thinking, or an idealist. Children see things very well sometimes, an idealist even better. I know that's what you think, because you're in the same place that I left off. You with all your talk and dreams of Africa. You still think you can patch up the world. Cure the sore of colonialism with a penicillin of independence. Yes. Independence and then what? What about all the, the crooks and thieves and just plain idiots who will come into power and steal and plunder the same as before? Only now they'll be black and do it in the name of the new independence. What about them? That's a problem for another time. First, we must get there. And when will it end? end? Who spoke of an end? An end to life? An end to living? An end to misery, to stupidity. Don't you see there's no real progress, Asagai? Just one large circle that we march in around and around. All of us with a, a picture in front of our faces, a mirage that we call the future. That is a mistake. What? What you just said about the circle. It isn't a circle. It is simply a long line. One that reaches into infinity. And because we can't see how it ends, we cannot see how it changes. And those, those people who see how the line changes, 
those who dream, who never give up. We call them idealists. And those people who can only see the circle, we call them realists. Asaga, while I was sleeping in that bed, people went out and they took the future right out of my hands. Was it? And nobody asked me, nobody consulted me. They just went out and changed my life. Was it your money? What? Was it your money he gave away? It belonged to all of us. But did you earn it? Would you have even had it at all if your father had it died? No. Then isn't there something wrong in a house? No. In a world where all dreams, good or bad, depend on the death of a man. I never thought I would see you like this, Elio. You, your brother, made a mistake. And you are grateful to him so that now he can give up on the ailing human race on account of it. You always ask about what good is anything? What good is struggle? Where are we going and why are we bothered? And you cannot answer it! From French Century High School, we have Emmett Ackman, who will be performing Those Winter Sundays by Robert Hayden. Sundays, too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black pole, then with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday weather made banked fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering, breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call, and slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic ang angers of that house. Speaking indifferently to him, who had driven out the cold and polished my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? From Westminster High School, we have Nicole Banks performing The Average Black Girl by Ernestine Johnson. They say I'm not the average black girl because I'm so well-spoken, poised, full of etiquette, a white man's token. You know, I remember my ex's mother telling me I didn't know how I was going to react when he brought home a black girl, but I like you because you talk so white. Well, when did me talking right equate to me talking white? Oh, they say I'm not the average black girl. No, 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 not the average black girl, because the pigment of my skin is just a shade lighter than that black girl over there. You know, the black girl over there. The black girl with the nappy hair. The black girls whose elbows can't skip a day without lotion. Whose hearts and heads are filled with self-hate and bottled up emotion. You know. The cocoa brown girls who have to face society every day and be tough because no matter how good they straighten their hair, their good is still not good enough. Oh, but see, luckily for me, see, I don't fall in that category. See, they say I'm not the average black girl because I speak with so much class and I don't have too much but just enough ass and not too much but just enough pizzazz. You know, just a little bit of attitude because you don't want to come off as one of those average black girls and come off as rude. You know, popping their gum and shaking their neck. Yeah, because those black girls get, like, no respect. But see, luckily for me, see, I get a pass because the melanin in my skin matches that brown paper bag. And my father, brother, and men that I date, pants don't sag. And when I speak, my tongue pronounces every syllable. 
and the combed part down the middle of my hair is naturally visible. Oh, oh, it must be a weave or she must be mixed because we all know the average black girl ain't got that good sh See, they say I'm not the average black girl because I corrected the professor when he used the word conversate. Converse. The word is converse, and in case you didn't get the memo, there are now eight, not nine planets in the universe. And when you're watching the numbers on your stocks move up and down, remember Oklahoma in a small town. One of the first Wall Streets was a black Wall Street that got mysteriously burned down. Oh, they say I'm not the average black girl. Well, let's flip this script and rewind this shit. Repaint the lines that have been blurred over time because the average black girl that I know See, the average black girl that I know made 19 trips through the Underground Railroad to free the slaves. Sat on segregated buses, refused to get up and pave new ways. The average black girl that I know? The average black girl that I know were Egyptian queens like Hatshepsut and Nidocris who were ruling dynasties and whole armies of men. Excuse me while I set fire to this poem with my pen because I am tired. Tired of the stereotypes that black girls have fallen into because of American mentality. Oh, but not half as tired as Ella Baker, Diane Nash, Septima Poinsett Clark. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired, Miss Fannie Lou Hamer. Daisy Bates, Anna Arnold Hedgeman, and Dorothy Heiss are far more tired than I am. But do you think the ones who say I am not the average black girl even give a damn? No. So pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliments. Pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliments. It's just the average black girl that I know. The average black girl that I know had courage that surpassed her every fear and fought for justice and equality year after year. So as I construct these words, pardon me as I shed a tear because I'm not half the black girl she was. I'm not half the black girl she was. See, there's a minor clause. See, she was out there fighting, breaking, and changing law, so I bow down to my black queen standing in the merit of her work. And as American society continuously throws these supercilious words unto me, I say no. I'm not the average black girl. I can only aspire to be. Thank you. Yeah. From Winters Mill High School, we have Kayla Assembly, who will be performing Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes. Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes. Let America Be America Again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love, where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme, that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. But opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I am the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery's scars. I am the red man driven from the land, and I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek, and finding only the same old stupid plan of doggy dog of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man, full of strength and hope, tangled in that ancient chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of grab, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, hum hungry, humble, mean. Hungry, yet today despite the dream, 
between yet today, O oh pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years. Yet I am the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a serf of kings, who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet its mighty daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned, that's, ma that's, that's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed through, the, through, through early seas in search of what I meant to be my home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lay. And torn from black Africa's strand, I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. The millions on relief today? The millions shot down when we strike? The millions who, who have nothing for our pay? For all the dreams we've dreamed, for all the songs we've sung, and all the hopes we've held, and all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me an any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take our land back again, America. Oh yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me. And yet I swear this oath, America it will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, and the endless plain, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America again. From Westminster High School, we have Gerard Campbell performing Knock Knock by Daniel Beattie. As a boy, I shared a game with my father. We played it every morning till I was three. He would knock, knock on my door, and I'd pretend to be asleep till he got right next to the bed. Then I would get up and jump into his arms. Good morning, Papa. And my Papa, he would tell me that he loved me. We shared a game, knock, knock. Till the day the knock never came, and my mama takes me on a ride past cornfields on this never-ending highway. So we reach a place of high rusty gates. A confused little boy. I enter the building, carried in my mama's arms. Knock, knock. We reach a room of windows and brown faces. Behind one of the windows sits my father. I jump out of my mama's arms and run joyously towards my papa, only to be confronted by this window. I knock, knock, trying to break through the glass, trying to get to my father. I knock, knock, as my mama pulls me away before my pop even says a word. And for years, he has never said a word. And so, 25 years later, I write these words for the little boy in me, who still awaits his papa's knock. Papa, come home, because I miss you. Miss you waking me in the mornings and telling me you love me. Papa, come home, because there's things I don't know. And I thought maybe you could teach me how to shave, how to dribble a ball, how to talk to a lady, to walk like a man. Papa, come home, because I decided a while back I want to be just like you, but I've forgotten who you are. And so, 25 years later, a little boy cries until I speak these words and try to heal. Try to father myself up, and I dream up a father who says the words, my father did not. Dear son, I am sorry I never came home. For every lesson I failed to teach, hear these words. 
Shave in one direction in strong, deliberate strokes to avoid irritation. Dribble the page with the brilliance of your ballpoint pen. Walk like a god and your goddess will come to you. No longer will I be there to knock on your door, so you must learn to knock for yourself. Knock, knock down the doors of racism and poverty I could knock. Knock, knock down doors of opportunity for the lost brilliance of the black men who crowd these cells. Knock, knock with diligence for the sake of your children. Knock, knock for me, for as long as you are free. These prison gates cannot contain my spirit. The best of me still lives in you. Knock, knock with the knowledge that you are my son, but you are not my choices. Yes, we are our father's sons and daughters, but we are not their choices. For despite their absences, we are still here, still alive, still breathing, with the power to change this world one little boy and girl at a time. Knock, knock, who's there? We are. Next from Westminster High School, we have Jordan Curtis and Taylor Lee performing Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainties of tides, just like springing hopes high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, Weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't take it awful hard. Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds? at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Next from Westminster High School, we have Bilal Manzoor performing If We Must Die by Claude McKay. by Cloud McKay. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, haunted and pinned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our cursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us die nobly, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain, then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe, the far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for a thousand blows, deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face a murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. Next from Westminster High School, we have Kevin Kwakumenta performing America by Claude McKay. <clears throat> A 
America by Claude McKay. Although she feeds me bread of bitterness and sinks into my throat her tiger's too, stealing my breath of life, I will confess, I love this cultured hell that tests my youth. Her vigor flows like tithes into my blood, giving me strength erect against my hate. Her bigness sweeps my being like a flood. Yet, as a rebel fronts a king and state, I stand within her walls with not a shred of terror, malice, not a word of jeer. Darkly, I gaze into the days ahead and see her might and granite wonders there, beneath the touch of time's unerring hand, like priceless treasures sinking in sin. Last but not least, from Westminster High School, we have Meg Vassallo performing Castles Made of Sand by Jimi Hendrix. Down the street, you can hear her scream, your disgrace, as she slams the door in his drunken face. And now he stands outside, and all the neighbors start to gossip and drool. He cries, oh girl, you must be mad. What happened to the sweet love you and me had? Against the door, he leans and starts a scene, and his tears fall and burn the garden green. And so castles made of sand fall into the sea eventually. A little Indian brave who before he was 10 played war games in the woods with his Indian friends, and he built the dream that when he grew up, he would be a fearless warrior Indian chief. Many moons passed and more the dream grew strong until tomorrow he would sing his first war song and fight his first battle, but something went wrong. Surprise attack killed him in his sleep that night. And so castles made of sand melts into the sea eventually. There was a young girl whose heart was a frown because she was crippled for life and couldn't speak a sound. And she wished and prayed that she would stop living, so she decided to die. She drew her wheelchair to the edge of the shore and to her legs she smiled, you won't hurt me no more. But then a sight she'd never seen made her jump and say, look, a golden winged ship is coming my way. And it really didn't have to stop, it just kept on going. And so castles made of sand slips into the sea eventually. Let's give another round of applause for all the performers. They were all truly amazing. Um, my brother and I would like to thank you all for allowing us to be your host. At this time, we will have closing remarks by Mr. John Lewis, who's the third vice president of the Carroll County Chapter of the NAACP, who will be followed by student recognition from Gene Lewis, who is the president of the Carroll County Chapter of the NAACP. can do or what I should do to follow what you have just witnessed. Because what you have just witnessed is a first in this county. What you have just witnessed is one of the most amazing things that I have ever seen for the first time to take the stage. What you have witnessed this evening is all about reading. It's about books. And books are about learning. But this afternoon, if you did not learn anything from this session, then you were not listening. If you did not learn anything from this session, this session you were not paying attention. Because this evening represented a host of African-American artists writers, poets. As far as I'm concerned, it was a great evening. 
if you think it was a great evening, one more time, give those who just spoke before you a round of applause and stand when you do it. On their behalf, I want to thank you. It is my job this evening to close this program up. And uh, I have to act on the advice of my counselor, and my counsel is my wife. <laughs> She's also my secretary, my attorney, <laughs> my legal advisor. So I promise you, as she directed me, don't stand up there and run your mouth too long. <laughs> but I can't help but say that this evening's adventure sort of coincides with we in the uh, African American community, along with a lot of help from our Caucasian, Hispanic uh, brothers and sisters, have been working on all year long. Now, perhaps you have not heard of uh, our latest program, which is considered uh, Trailblazers, African American Trailblazers in Carroll County. Prior to that, we did a session on the March on Washington. Prior to that, we did, uh, what would you call it, Gene, African American? Excuse me? Oral history. Oral history. So we've been on a run here the last few months, in the last year, and again, thanks to a lot of our friends, and above all, thanks to the Media Center. And this evening's program ties in with the other two programs. All of it put together is simply to demonstrate academically and historically, the African American's contribution to this county. This evening, as you have witnessed, was the icing on the cake. But trust me, as the old saying goes, we ain't done yet. <laughs> so it, it is with great pleasure that we accept this evening's performance, that it might be the icing on the cake. We hope that in the future, you will take the time to turn to Channel 19, if you haven't already done so, and witness some of the, those programs. This too, I'm sure, will be on Channel 19. It will inspire you. It will enlighten you. Above all things, the full intention is to have you recognize the simple fact that African American history is not one month out of a year. African American history, like all history in this, this Americas, is 24-7. Be it African American, be it Indian, be it Hispanic, be it German, be it Italian. All of these are histories that belong to America. And they are all 24-7, not just a month out of the year. And I think we do a disservice to all people when we condense this into a certain time out of the year when we can talk about the African-American achievement or when we can talk about the achievement of Native Americans or we can talk about the achievement of people from Germany or any other part of the country. You see, this country was put together by immigrants. It didn't just come together by one people. We are a nation of immigrants. We, will, we have survived as a nation of immigrants. And we will continue to thrive as a nation of immigrants. 
So on behalf of everybody in the Americas, this evening and all the other programs put forth by the African American community were tied together simply to tell you historically so that you will remember. Academically, so we can take what has been put on Channel 19 in the newspapers and we can put it into the history books so that our children cannot just learn about one segment of America, that can, they can learn about all of America. Because as a multitude of people, we have combined to make one tremendously great country. Regardless, whether you want to declare that we have, we can speak one language or whether you want to declare that we can look a certain way, unfortunately, we are not one language. Unfortunately, we don't all dress the same. Unfortunately, for a lot, and fortunately for many, we don't all look alike. And thank God for that. <laughs> so it's on, and finally, and I haven't gotten a red light from my wife yet, but I'll. <laughs> Again, it, it, it has truly been my pleasure to sit here this evening and listen to these young folks. The key word here now, the key word is young folks. That's the key word. See, we can tell the history. We can talk about the history. But it is the young people who have to take it to the next level. They're the ones who have to take it through the parted sea. We are simply the teachers, and we're talking today about history. History is learned through books. So books is the second main topic of this evening. Read, people, read. Read and understand. Because to get along with your brother or your sister, no matter what color he is, no matter what country he comes from, no matter how he or she dress, no matter what language they speak, to understand that individual, you must learn about that individual. And how do you learn about that individual? You read. Thank you very much. You read. It is at this point I'm going to turn the program over to the president of the Garrow County branch of the NAACP and my boss, Gene Lewis. Hello, everyone. I just want to give honor to Kendra Hart, who is with the Carroll County Public Schools, a superintendent for elementary school and gifted in talent, and Jan Jameson, who is a superintendent, uh, not superintendent, supervisor of English departments and girl languages. When they approached me, I was so excited that we would be part of this activity. And as you all know, we had, it took two snowstorms for us to get here, but I think it only enriched us and it made us want to do this more. And I just thank those ladies and I want to give them a hand. <laughs> with their permission, I called my friend Lynn Wheeler with Carroll County Public Library and she came on board. And students, this was absolutely phenomenal. What you were able to do is just 
wonderful. You took those, that uh, literature and you made it part of your own. And I just thank you so very much for what you've done. I want to recognize all of you. When you go out at the table where the uh, food was, there's a certificate of recognition for your being a part of this. And also, if you would look under your seats, there is a white slip that's part of our gift for you in the back. That's, that's everyone, not just the students. And if you don't see one under your seat, look till you find one. And there's some. And uh, Mrs. Lebroni is standing back there with a pink jacket on. And you can go back there. And if you hang around, if you don't have one under your seat, and everyone has taken theirs, then maybe you can have one too. I just want to thank everybody for coming to the Media Center and you as the community coming out and helping. Thank you.